Get ready for some crazy talk with your host Sean McCulley, the Crazy Hunter, on www.podcastdfw.com. Warning, crazy talk is not for the faint of heart or the politically correct. It's where you can hear anything and nothing's taboo. Now here's the Crazy Hunter, Sean McCulley. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Sean McCulley, the Crazy Hunter. You're on live crazy talk with Aaron the Gladiator Toehill. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, a, a, a woman fighter who predated Ronda Rousey and Chris Cyborg. She was uh, one of the first, first women's world champions in mixed martial arts and boxing. Lady even fought uh, the great Leela Ali. She's a two-sport professional, a former American gladiator, and uh, one damn hot bitch with uh, uh, lots and lots of skills. I had the pleasure of training her and starting her out in martial arts, and uh, I just wanted to uh, welcome you and have you in the show. We're we're we're, we're live here at right? the Ruka Gym, Ruka. so so we've got a we've got a background of some of the best fighters yeah. in the world. Tony Ferguson's in the ring, moving around with a, a movie star. Um, we've got Mike Bisbing in here, Jay Silva. There's too many names for me to... to, to Jason Perillo. Oh, of or course, the great Jason Perillo. And um, they're going to do a group photo right now that we might have to take a short break and get into. Ladies and gentlemen, there was uh, no way a camera hog like myself could not get in a picture with those guys just because that was a pretty cool photo. What do you say, Aaron? That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Stinky, but cool. Yeah. Everybody just got done training, and that was a lot of man smell. That was rough. But anyway, we're back here with Aaron the Gladiator Toe Hill, um, one of the best women fighter ever on the planet as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I had the privilege of knowing her for years, training her, and uh, discovering your talent. That's right. I'm claiming. Please, I'm claiming. That's right. Please tell everyone the story because oh. it's, quite a, it's quite a good one. Here's their sexy, we got, we got, a, we got another we got another one boxing. this is a lot this is live the, we got Jason Drexel coming on LA in and out days. Uh, the LA <laughs> <laughs> we've got a, DP's favorite we've got a shout out from uh, Jason Drexel we've got uh, all the boys in the back hooping it up it's a uh, it's it's live boxing gym. Right. You can hear the bell going off as we speak. That's right. But let me talk about this punk rock beautiful girl who was in a bar one night. I would call it a dive bar. Would you call it a dive bar? Mm -hmm. It's a, at least a little dive e for the Newport right. Beach, Costa Mesa area. Yeah. Um, it was at the time called the Little Night, which we used to uh, call the Little Fight. I go in and I'm having a beer and was in between fights and training and that kind of thing. So it was actually. And this is almost almost 20 years ago. This is almost 20 years yeah, almost ago. Almost 20 years ago. Okay, so she was in there. So we're a, old now. No, she was in there on a fake ID yeah. anyway. You were too, right? I was. I think I was like 18 or 19 at the I time. I think you were. Mm -hmm. That was so funny. So yeah. I see this girl, pretty girl, tall, about to. Uh, she's talking shit and chesting it up with some dude. Right. And she's peacocking, you know. He's about to get, in, she's about to get in a fight with a guy. So I can't let this happen. Plus I like to punch people in the face. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna step into this because this just isn't looking cool. So I excuse the guy and let him leave and tell him a few choice words about what I'm gonna do to his face and his body if he keeps going. And I think it's over and I'm gonna be the hero. And then all of a sudden I get from the girl, hey, you're that Sean McCauley guy. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, she wants to fight me now. That's this right. is weird. And I go, yes, I am. And she goes from very stern to very sweet and says, you used to train my brother, Sean. I used to train at LA Boxing a little bit when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I want to be a professional kickboxer. Yeah. And I said, well, by all means, why don't we do this? Why don't you show up at the gym tomorrow at 830 in the morning, which That's was a... Right. Uh, which was a uh, kind of a challenge, and you know, and so to speak, because we were out drinking. So wasted. I figured if she was uh, going to show up at eight thirty in the morning, that was going to show her first step and and uh, first step in dedicating to the martial arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very impressed. She made it, and I was even hung over. Me and my sister came in hung over. You guys were hung over, yeah. but I'll tell you this much: I, I showed. I up. had. Uh, I had. Uh, 
put a lot of people on the pads and a lot of women at that point and I had her throw a straight right hand down the pipe that made me say check it out you do have a future you do have a career will you sign right here because I want to manage you and be your trainer <laughs> for uh for the first three years of your mm -hmm. career so here's a three-year contract right off the bat I think it was like the first day that I met her and I knew she was going to be world champion so here we are right. 20 years Fast later forward. and you've had a fantastic career I mean from American Gladiator to you know women's world champion boxer yeah. It's, Tell us a little bit about yourself, so I have to stop rocking the mic here. <laughs> yeah, I've had, you know, I retired a few years ago, probably about four years ago or so. But um, Sean and I, I started training late 90s, 97, 98. And then yep. we had, I had my first pro fight in 1999. And back then, obviously, there wasn't a lot of women that were doing the MMA. They were boxing and kickboxing. That's so right. Like Sean said, I was like, oh, I could, I'll do kickboxing. I thought I was such a badass. I'm like, I can do this, you know, easily easily and um, we trained for about six months okay and this is when yeah the UFC was still you know it was pretty much in its infancy in at its that infancy time. and then they just started doing weight classes mm -hmm. and they weren't even thinking about doing women at right. that point I mean right. it was really hard for a woman to get a yeah. fight in mixed martial arts and, mm -hmm. and again we were planning on starting you out as a kickboxer right and Aaron, at the time, who I don't remember who you were training with, but you were already doing jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu -jitsu, jiu jitsu as well. I think with like Joe Marrera, I was okay. with him. I trained with Kleber for a long time. Um, Kleber Luciano. Yeah, uh huh. So I've been training. You so know, you had a she had a very good pedigree as far as jiu jitsu went, and was pretty good at it, to be honest. With I you, think right? I was just an athlete. You know, I grew up playing sports. I was in sports my whole life, and um, the biggest thing was that I was an angry young kid. And I needed a good outlet, something cathartic. And thank God I found mixed martial arts, found training because it, honest to God, saved, saved my life. But um, so, yeah, we went to Aruba, right? No, that's that the was point. that you was. You want to talk about the. That is a funny fight. Right. I mean, that was like a martial arts movie. Uh huh. We flew to Aruba. Uh huh. Um, I basically got they, they, they're they, like, oh, you'll be the, the yeah, girl, you know. Yeah, they they had they, they really set us up. She had a couple MMA fights, and she had like forty kickboxing fights. Yeah, she fights had like she was like thirty six and one mm -hmm. as a kickboxer. They had done the same thing to me a couple right. months before. And a woman, a grown ass. I mean, I was she like was twenty twenty one years old. And a she grown was my ass age. woman. She actually at that point made Cyborg Chris Cyborg look unmuscular. Yeah. It was a yeah. Irma, yeah. Verhoeven. Irma Verhoeven. And Irma was. Uh, like Bob we said, Schreiber's. Bob Schreiber's Bob Schreiber's wife. Yes. I think it might be ex-wife at yeah, this point. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know. But Irma made men, muscular men look unmuscular. Yeah. Um, it looked like he was. She was fighting the female version of Ivan Drago. Yes. It was a. Honest it was. God, it was a scary and weird it night. It was scary. It was a scary and weird I night. I thought it was tough until I saw her, and I'm like, oh my god, what am I doing? We were. We were had a. We we fought in a boxing ring on the beach, surrounded by container shipping containers that right. was one of those weird fights and you know you guys you guys one 15 minute round one yeah okay this was b one round 15, 15 minutes 15 minutes and this is your debut first fight this is her debut i mean mm -hmm. it was a fantastic fight it, she pretty did amazing a, you did a fantastic job and i believe you guys drew yeah i got a draw and and i was bitching all the way uh, all the way through I about that won. i i considered it i considered it a win mm -hmm. i considered it a win i almost got in a fight with all the judges mm -hmm. and then shortly thereafter i ended up fighting in the event too because the promoters <laughs> lost a fighter right so somebody came over who was a, a mm -hmm. friend i use that term loosely and i won't name any names but uh they said hey sean you're an alternate can you help us out and i'm like no i'm not come on man and i was i was drinking beer today by the pool dude we really need a help we really need a fight so i jumped in and knocked john john boschko out i yeah. think or or tko to him Somebody, and I, and I, I was done in a minute and a half, and I thought I was, uh, I thought I was money at that point, but mm -hmm. I was an alternate, so I got to go in next and get my ass kicked by Heath Herring. Yeah, that was right. back when there was no weight classes, no gloves, mm -hmm. and like we said, 15-minute rounds. You guys had 30-minute rounds. Oh, that's that right. Ended. That was horrible. So, horrible and unfair. I mean, you if know, you know. But 
I mean, Sean and I, we traveled the world. We went to Japan many times. I was the first woman to do tournament style. Yes. You know, I fought three times in one night. Yeah, and the um, three the first time you fought three times in one night, you fought a two hundred pound judo yeah, I gold a medalist and like a three hundred pound, pound gold medalist in judo right. from Russia. So there were These no girls classes. were freaky. Mm-hmm. They were freaky. They were big, you man. Know? You know. And so we did that, and then I started doing boxing at the same time because we would, had to travel overseas. It wasn't as big for the women here, so we were like, "Oh, we'll supplement, we'll cross train, and we'll go." You know, we'll do pro boxing. Well, you had I such never good hands. In a million years, though, I would do be a professional fighter. Never. I, you, you know, know it was so boxing. good because you got to cross over, and you were really such a good boxer when we trained. It was always obvious to me that you were going to be a success in boxing so we started booking boxing fights and mm-hmm. you did just that you were mm-hmm. beating girls from the start and having yeah you know it was it was I did really well with that too so it was kind of nice i mean i did oh, really well all the way to <laughs> the wbc yeah. women's world title yeah. versus leela ali okay yeah. now unfortunately you didn't prevail in that event but you you got to the show man yeah. and you fought for the first women's yeah, wbc women's title uh-huh. That is, it was big, and we did, I think it was the IBA title as well. So, you know, Sean knows me. I've calmed down a lot as I've gotten older and a little more humble. Oh, it's a little more humble, a little, a little more, more sweet, a little yeah. bit a little bit wise with age, as, mm-hmm. as we all get. And you, you, you and me both, darling, mm-hmm. you and me both, thank God. But uh, let's... Uh, Let's just, it is crazy talk, and the only reason we're not drinking like we normally do oh in crazy God. talk is because it's uh, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, so mm-hmm. um, I don't have my first drink until noon. So we're calling it a cigarette break, ladies and gentlemen. You've been listening to Crazy Talk with your host, Sean McCulley, the Crazy Hunter. We'll be right back. Hashaddit.com, today's number one hashtag search engine. A hashtag is a pound sign attached to a word or unspaced phrase. It unites like-minded people on things they are passionate about. At hashaddit.com, you'll be able to search or share your unique experiences with others. Hash away on your favorite social sites like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. At hashaddit.com, get connected and experience a world that will inspire your passions and interests. And it will instantly be shared for the world to view and enjoy at hashaddit.com. If you see a hashtag that interests you, enter it in our search box. Get inspired, motivated, or get educated on today's trending topics. At hashaddit.com, it brings every hashtag conversation in one place, in real time. Don't forget to search for the hashtag at hashaddit.com. Now back to Crazy Talk with Sean McCulley, the Crazy Hunter. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crazy Talk with the Crazy Hunter, Sean McCulley. And I am here with Aaron, the Gladiator Toehill, one of the first women's MMA champions. Now again, the girl who predates Holly Holm, Ronda Rousey, and all the rest. It's, uh, it's fantastic to have you here. I love you very much. And I you've love been, you too. You've been in my life for twenty something mm-hmm. years at this point. So uh, yeah, you know, it's great to uh, it's great to talk uh, talk to you and talk about the old days yeah. and talk about you know your career and what you're doing now. Let's go back to an old story and then we'll get to back to what you're doing now. Well, you start. Take let's, take take us off from somewhere. Good we'll, good story. We'll, let's let's finish. We the have ju- a lot let's of fini- stories. Let's though. finish. What was it? Smack girl. That was the tournament where they tried to throw her under the bus. Oh, my now, God. They, Every time we went they, there to Japan, oh, they, they, they just... Ruined, they tried to ruin oh. us. They, they, they put you against two... And the Americans would come over and dominate and crush, just yeah. like we always did. Yes. And they didn't like it. Well said. They, they did... Uh, it was, you know, they wanted... It was a Japanese promotion. It mm-hmm. was a Japanese... Uh, they wanted a Japanese girl to win the tournament, which, you know, she ended up doing, I believe. Yeah, and, that's right. Uh, you. In the second one, because the first one was the remix, right? That was the first ever one in ninety nine in two thousand. Okay, so, so it was the, the first ever sixteen woman tournament. So if you won, you'd fight four times in one night. So, but they let the smaller girls fight three times in one night, which we didn't understand. It didn't make any sense. So I lost in my second one, but I fought twice in one night. Yes, that's when Marlos right. Kunin won. Right. And then um, later, Remix turned into Smack Girl, which was we did another 12-woman tournament, and I fought three times in one night and um, knocked out Marlos, first girl to knock her out. 
Coon and that which was a very very good she win. She was tough. She, she Mer- was undefeated at the time. Hey, Merluse was tough. And you know, one of the things that's funny, it's like a side little tidbit. You came out to Thunderstruck. Mm-hmm. That was your song, yeah. ACDC Thunderstruck. Yeah. A lot of great fighters have used it. I'm um, yourself, Arturo Gotti, Gotti our, my our favorite. favorite boxer. Yeah, my favorite. And, and I'm not gonna lie. After she started winning to that that song, I came out to that song too. And um, never lost when I came out to Thunderstruck. So <laughs> that song. if uh, they start a seniors league at any time, right? I'm coming out to Thunderstruck. Masters League. The Masters thing league. that I saw that night that cracked me up, oh, really? and I don't know why this always tickled me, and I, you pointed it out. Your song came on, and you started to walk to the ring, and you're like, look it, Merluz is dancing to the song. And she was totally moving, and like, now then the words to yours, your coming out music, right. which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And then you promptly uh, got into a very good scrap and mm-hmm. uh, finished her, man. Mm-hmm. That was that was a great win for yeah, you. Yeah, it was. You know, and then knocked the first girl out in like 27 seconds. And then the third girl, I had fought her before, a couple years before that, and broke her arm. And then she made it to the third fight. And I was beating the crap out of this girl. I mean, flying knees, elbow. I mean, yes. it was like, it was it was a highlight reel and then um she was trying to do something illegal holding on to my glove yep. she actually tapped like two girls out with this yes. it was an illegal like it's called a duck yeah. sit out yeah. you're not allowed to grab you can it's, it, it's so kind you, of, it, you it was kind of a mini twister without the gi it was like a twister right, but she was holding on to the inside of the glove so yeah. it would like rip your i mean it really could be detrimental anyway long story short she did it a couple times and i elbowed her yep and then they gave me a, a yellow card. Right. And then she falls over on her back and says, I can't move. I can't move. And they took her on a stretcher. They yeah. did the whole thing. Yep. It was, she went out like a soccer player yes. with an injury at that point. And you know? I lost. I was, yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was it, like $50,000 or something to win, which for us back 10 years ago, oh, you know, yeah. was a lot of money. That was, that was a big payday. It was a lot of money. So I got a disqualification loss on my record, which always sucked, but. Yeah, but I'll take a DQ over yeah. a loss loss any day yeah. and you won the fight and I remember <laughs> to the point that, that you won the fight, I think I've threatened bodily harm upon yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. of promoters yeah. and a couple of uh, yeah. other trainers and They uh, loved us, but man, we would ca- we caused problems cuz we well, were just we, crazy drunk Americans. We caused we caused problems yeah. and we could, we you know, we 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 called people on their bullshit right. and Exactly. Uh, you know, I I I thought that was Part of the fun, man. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can't call people on, you know, you can't call mm-hmm. people out on their bullshit, you know, you're kind of a coward. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, in my opinion, they put my fighter and my friend in jeopardy with this move and with how they were, you know, handling their promotion. And then they, with you dropping an elbow on her at that point, it was kind of like, okay, the girl's cheating already, grabbing your gloves, which is completely Ill- illegal then mm-hmm. and now. And... I don't know. Um, you know, it was, they didn't want to, they just didn't want to pay us the money. Yeah, they that just, was it. They, you know? they knew we were going to win. They knew if they gave the Japanese girl they the money, they we could make payments. Yeah, they knew if yeah, they had yeah, to, right? they knew if they were going to, if she was going to win, they better give me that 50 grand in cash <laughs> one before I leave. Sum. Exactly. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you know, then, you know. Um, but you and I, you know, we've, like, like Sean said, I mean, we went through our ups and downs and we've grown together we've seen a lot of stuff happen in the last 20 years with one another's lives and uh, you know i'm really grateful like i always say i love you well, I love you're you my back. brother i'm glad Lori too you know we all it's a good group of people and absolutely and you know, I, I i think that you find that a lot in martial arts and mixed martial arts it's more good people than bad and you get like you know you have you, you have a lot of fun it's like an extended family and you know um, mm-hmm. You know, like here, for instance, one of the best places in the world to train is the Ruka Gym. And Pat Tanari was, uh, you know, I was Pat's roommate. I used to live in his house when way before Ruka started and those kind of things. And now he's put together this huge gym and uh, he's like a philanthropist of MMA. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's helping us all, all get better. And like, you know, I'm looking at Mike Bisbing right here. I'm Jay Silva, Tony Ferguson. These guys are all rolling, and 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 Freddie Prince Jr. is in here for yeah. God's that was sake. pretty so cool. We got a we, little we got, selfie with got, uh, Freddie Prince. Yeah, we got a, we got the we got the shot with the actor. It's it's been that a pretty cool. cool day, man. Yeah, you know, and we're uh, blessed, you know, to still be a part of something like this and seen yeah. traveled the world, had some of the best times. I 
Yeah, the, some yeah. stories we can't. Most of them we don't remember or we can't repeat. So. No, yeah, we, 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 you know, we, we've changed the names to protect the guilty <laughs> yeah, um, with all those stories. But so, you know, real quick, um, because just going down memory lane, we've burned up most of our interview mm-hmm. time. But talk to me about what you're doing now. Talk to me about, you know, uh, work and, you know, okay. training fighters and doing what you're yeah, doing. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I've been doing that anyway for the past, I don't know, 15 years. But um, my business now is primarily, yeah, I, I train a lot of moms and kids. I have a huge passion for children. Um, teaching That's them good. boxing, which you well, know, you, I've always, I've well, always loved teaching kids. Well, yeah, and you're, you're, you're anti, yeah, you know, you're anti, anti to anti. my my kids, and yeah. they love you to death. My and little Zoe followed you around for I weeks. Know, my little Zoe, my little Zozo, um, and I've been able to see the evolution of women's sports. You know, watching, like I said, yeah, I was the first one. We didn't have anything back then. There was no UFC, Strike Force, pr- money. You were doing it because you were. Yeah. crazy and oh, yeah. you wanted to fight because well, you were yeah you were mm-hmm. down to be something mean, you guys were real pioneers we're in different. the sport because it just was different it wasn't like they we we as the men we weren't getting paid nearly what we deserved and you guys were getting paid even less mm-hmm. so for you guys to come out and put your your bodies right. on the line and everything else yeah was, uh, yeah yeah it was it was it was really commendable commendable to you guys and I'm, I'm watching uh, one of my favorite fighters leave the gym Mike Bisbing ladies and gentlemen oh, Mike hi. Bisbing so, yeah, uh, you, you know, know, but I mean, I've been able to see the evolution of it and watch Gina Carano and see Chris Cyborg and see Ronda Rousey and now Holly Holm. And it's been amazing. I love being a part of that and, and watching w- the growth. Big J Silva know, just and, left the and, gym. And, and <laughs> right. Uh, and seeing it. And so, you know, I have a, ha- uh, a couple female fighters that I train who want to do MMA as well. And we do a lot of boxing and um so I mean that's really my big thing is a real is testament sh- to you sharing. is you're literally one of the people who kicked the door open for this yeah. generation of fighters, yeah. including the Rondas and the Hollies right. and everybody else. I mean, you're a pioneer in the sport. Yeah, you know sometimes I I don't think about it that way, but yeah, when I look back and everything that I've done and my accolades and still the only woman to be ranked in the top five in two sports at the same time, I'm, there's no other woman. So. You know, I worked really hard, had almost 30 pro fights, and I accomplished a lot. So uh, right now my passion is sharing that knowledge, sharing martial arts, g- what I've learned, and, and passing that down to people who want to learn. And, um, of course, anyone who knows me knows animals, dogs are my other passion. So, yes, that, that, um, is, that, is, that is your, your I wanted to, Yeah, I wanted to win to, the power ball to, so I could You're open trying a bunch to of save every puppy that you can. Every, I know. You know, you are, you're, a big, <gasps> you're a big proponent for, yes. you know, animals yeah. and animal rights. That's and right else and you know i love that about you that's a really cool thing yeah. and you know i would uh, i would hate to see somebody man woman child or small mammal get caught doing anything abusive to an animal around Aaron. you oh are going God. to get your ass mm-hmm. kicked so um where can that. where can people find you Aaron? where can some of these up-and-coming women find you and you know start to train with somebody with right. your uh background well, well that's a good question so um i'm in pretty much the mecca where a lot of fighting and mma is and we're in orange county california uh the gym that i'm out of is american gym in costa mesa i also have a instagram account and it's at aaron dot fights aaron dot fights okay um you can contact me on there you can see my background my pictures what i do with my life and um, anybody who's interested in training with me or reading about me, you know, that's to, probably the best to, thing. Go to, to Instagram, Instagram and yeah. check out Aaron Messenger and yeah. what's, uh, and tell me what's good, what's mm, new in your life. Train, train, training with training with the best mm-hmm. will make you the best. That's true. You know, steel sharpens steel. So there it is. Yeah. So that's where I am, and um, come find me. You know, um, that was my. My, my favorite, <laughs> my well, that was my favorite and most least cool interview. I, I love you very much. I'd like to thank you, thank you for being on Crazy Talk. This was the least crazy that the Crazy Talk show has been right. thus far. But we'll uh, have another one. Though. We're gonna have Trust one. Me. We're gonna have one that uh, is right around cocktail hour, mm-hmm. just to get a little loose and maybe tell about some of the stories where we don't protect the guilty. The, the names. We don't the, change yeah, the yeah, names to change. protect the guilty. 
But anyway, Aaron, I, I you know like to thank you very much for 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 taking your time out to uh, come to Crazy Talk and uh, visit the Ruka Gym. And thank you, thank you for having me, Sean. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And uh, this is Sean McCulley, Crazy Hunter, signing off. Bye. Crazy Talk with your host Sean McCulley is a www.podcastdfw.com production. The opinions of the guests and the hosts of Crazy Talk do not reflect the opinions or ideas of the www.podcastdfw.com website or Lap Media LLC.